Hello and welcome to Maths with Jacob. This lesson will focus on Lowest Common Multiple Part 2. This lesson is a continuation of the previous video. More examples will aim to help with further understanding. Example 1. Find the lowest common multiple of 6 and 9. Here are the multiples of 6. Here are the multiples of 9. The LCM is the smallest common number in both lists and each of the numbers divide into it evenly. So here the LCM of 6 and 9 is 18. That's the lowest number that occurs in both lists. Example 2. Find the LCM of 6, 8 and 12. The multiples of 6 are these. Here are the multiples of 8. And here are the multiples of 12. Again, the LCM is the smallest common number in all three lists. And each of the numbers divide into it evenly. So here the LCM of 6, 8 and 12 is 24. There, there and there. Example 3. As we saw in the previous video, the LCM is an excellent way of solving sums like this where we have to add fractions together which have different denominators. Finding the LCM of 6 and 9, the two numbers in the denominator is very helpful here. So the multiples of 6 are these numbers. The multiples of 9 are these numbers. The LCM of 6 and 9 is 18. So basically, here's our common denominator, which helps us to work out that 5 over 6 is the same as 15 over 18, and 7 over 9 is the same as 14 over 18. If you ask, well, how do I arrive at 15 and 14? There are many, many ways of doing this, but a very simple way is, 6 divided into 18 goes 3 times, 3 fives are 15. 9 divided into 18 goes twice, twice 7 are 14. And if you don't like that way, your teachers will show you many other ways. 15 plus 14 gives us 29, so that's really 29 over 18. So when we add those two fractions together, we get 29 over 18 is the answer. And this is the final answer here, 1 and 11 eighteenths. As we saw in the previous video, the LCM is very useful in solving real world examples. Now here's a particular real world example and the LCM comes in very handy here. Example 4. John, Bill and Ted play darts at regular intervals at the same venue. John plays every second day, Bill plays every fourth day, and Ted plays every sixth day. If they all play on the eighth day of May, what is the next date when they will all play darts together? So, one of them plays on the second, the other one plays on the fourth, and the other one plays on the sixth. So we find the LCM of those three numbers. So in order to do that, we work out the multiples of 2 first, then the multiples of 4, then the multiples of 6. The LCM of the above three numbers is 12. There, there, and there. So... They will all play tennis together 12 days later on the 20th day of May. See how they played on the 8th? Just add 8 plus 12 and that will give you the 20th day of May. Here's another real world example, example 5. Faye and Sarah each had a string of equal length. Faye cuts her string into equal lengths of 4 metres, while Sarah cuts hers into equal lengths of 9 metres. If there was no remainder in both cases, 
find the shortest possible length of string given to them. So we have four meter lengths here for Faye, nine meter lengths for Sarah. That's after they cut their original string. So let's find the multiples of four, which are these numbers. The multiples of nine are these numbers. Since the LCM of four and nine is 36, the shortest possible length is 36 meters. So each of them is given a string of 36 meters in length. So when Faye cuts hers into four meter lengths, she's going to have nine meters, sorry, nine lengths. She will have nine separate lengths. And each of those lengths will be four meters. She'll have nine of them. Sarah cuts hers into nine meter lengths, so she's going to have four lengths. So her lengths are longer. She'll only have four lengths, and each of the lengths will be nine meters. So that's an interesting uh, sum, and the LCM comes in very handy. I don't know why Fay and Sarah would be cutting their string into equal lengths. Maybe they're doing a craft activity, who knows? But the LCM helps us to solve this problem.